Hello everyone, I'm Carrie Keffler and welcome to my Hollow Beads tutorial. In today's video, I'll be using a bent steel rake, small flat tweezers, and the handheld graphite Holy Roller Marver by Barefoot Art. The torch I am using is a Hellcat by Carlisle, and the transparent glass colors I am using for this bead are Epitry Dark Amber, Medium Amber, and Light Purple. The mandrel is a 332 inch mandrel, which is my favorite size for making hollow beads because I like making beads quite large. You can also use a 1 16th inch mandrel if you want to make smaller hollow beads or if you are using a fine stringing material for your jewelry designs. I'm starting off by having all the ports open on my torch for a wide bushy flame. This is important because I'll be creating this hollow bead by building up two small discs and it's important to have the bushy flame in order to keep the discs from cracking while you create your bead. I'm starting off with the dark amber and slowly building up a disc on the left hand side of my mandrel. As you can see, I'm working slightly outside the flame and dipping my mandrel into the flame throughout the process of building up the disc. The reason for this is to have a little balance of heat control so I'm not fully melting that little bead flat. I want to build it up and make it a nice even shape. I'm going to be pausing in a moment and using my little flat tweezers in order to keep the disc nice and even. This is a little pair of tools that I've had in my arsenal for quite some time. Can't even remember where I bought it quite honestly, but I'm sure you've got a pair of these somewhere. So just keep your tool nice and cool. In between the times that you see me touching the bead, I'm dipping the tool into water just outside of the camera view. You want to make sure that you keep your tools nice and cool, otherwise they're going to stick to your bead. You don't want that to happen. So after I'm happy with the shape of this disc, I'm going to take the same color and build another disc on the other side. You can alternate your colors every which way you like. This bead is so lovely with a variety of transparent colors. I just chose these because these colors resemble one of my favorite stones called ametrine, which is citrine and amethyst sort of together in the same stone. I love that blend of colors of the amber and the purple. So that's why I chose these ones. I've also done these beads with beautiful shades of turquoise and green and blue. So just try lots of variety of colors and see what you can create. So the way I build my hollows is by building up these discs one little bit at a time. There are lots of ways to create hollow beads. You can build them up this way. You can do them with a puffy mandrel. You can blow into them through a blowpipe. There's so many different ways to do them. This is just the first way that I learned and it's still my favorite way of making hollow beads today. I started making beads about 19 years ago and hollows were some of my first beads I ever created. They're so magical and mesmerizing. They're addicting to make, quite honestly. It's hard to stop once you started and you want to just keep making them all day. So I'm going back in and shaping my little discs, keeping them in and out of the flame, and using those little tweezers to touch them up in between. It's important if you're going to use a tool like this to make sure that they're flat tweezers and not serrated, because you don't want to have textures in your discs. So now I'm bringing in the amethyst color, and I'm going to keep adding to the discs and again, you can use any colors you like, and you don't have to start off with such a small amount of one color. You can make a large disc in a certain color and then bring in stripes of other colors that are more narrow towards the center. I usually just start with a dark color on the outside and work towards lighter colors towards the middle. I love the way the light reflects through these beads and that's a really nice way to balance your color, in my opinion. So now I'm adding a little bit evenly to both sides, to both discs. I want to make sure I don't give too much attention to one side than the other. I want to make sure that I keep them in the flame, slightly above the flame, so that you can see with the camera view, but also because I'm taking advantage of the heat rising off the torch, off the flame, and keeping all of my discs nice and warm. You want to make sure you keep turning your discs as well while you're building them up. If you've never made disc beads before, I recommend starting off practicing by making one disc at a time. Don't even worry about making a hollow bead to start if this is a new process for you. Just focus on making discs. Make one at a time, one per mandrel, until you feel really confident with the process. Sometimes they're a little tricky, but like everything else, just takes a little bit of practice. 
Once you've mastered your discs, then you can start practicing building up two together. It is a little tricky at first. I remember when I was first learning, I broke a lot of discs. <laughs> I cracked them. They exploded. All sorts of crazy things happened. But it, after a little while, I got the hang of it. And now I know how to make a hollow bead. So as I keep building up, I'm also building towards the center. I'm not going straight up, as you can see. I'm building the discs a little bit so that they can eventually join in the middle. I'm still using the amethyst glass, the purple. I just love this color. Sometimes I'll do them solid colors, but the stripes for me are just my absolute favorite. Remember to keep your discs warm. And it doesn't matter if they're not perfectly even at this point. As you can see, they're not perfectly balanced, but we're gonna fix that, so don't you worry. So now I'm coming in with the medium amber. You can also use a lighter color, but I love this particular color. It's a very nice, rich amber. And it's absolutely beautiful for hollow beads. So now I'm just adding a little bit at a time the amber to the amethyst. Again, building towards the center. You want to try to make sure that you don't leave any little holes as you are building. The whole point of this exercise is to eventually trap air within the bead. And that's hard to do if you've got little holes where the air can leak out. We are also going to make sure that we double check everything and fix any of those problems as well. So I add a little bit of glass, just a little bit at a time. I'm checking to make sure I don't have any little holes where I've already applied the glass and trying to keep the heat balanced in the center. Now, this is my secret trick. If you've watched any of my other tutorials, you know that I love my bent steel rake. It's my favorite tool. And in this particular exercise, what I'm doing is just touching those two discs together by using the elbow of the bent steel rake. You don't need to use the pointy end, just the rounded elbow. Now, when I take my tool out of the camera view, what I'm doing is dunking it into a glass of cold water. If my rake gets too hot, it will stick to the bead and destroy my beautiful hollow creation. You don't want that to happen. So one of the things I tell my students is a cool tool is the rule. Corny, I know, but it will help you remember, hopefully, to keep your tools nice and cool. Remember to dip them in the water after they've touched your bead one or two times. So I'm just very carefully examining my hollow bead. I'm checking for tiny little gaps, little tiny holes where the air can leak out. Even if you have a very tiny pinprick size hole somewhere on your bead, all the gas and air inside of your bead will escape and your beautiful hollow bead will deflate. That's a very sad thing. So we wanna to try to avoid that after all the hard work that's gone into it so far. So I can tell that I don't have any holes in there because my bead is not collapsing, it's expanding. And that's because the air inside is expanding with the heat. So it's actually blowing up the hollow bead from the inside. I love this process. It kind of turns from a lumpy little bead into a beautiful, smooth, round, luminous bead in just a matter of seconds. I'm making sure that I heat the very ends of my beads evenly. I wanna have a nice puckered end to my bead, so I use a little trick. Another favorite tool of mine called gravity. I love those free tools. <laughs> All you have to do is heat a little bit on the end, and as you can see, I'm angling my bead up and down and allowing gravity to make sure that I don't have a pointy end. It's very important to have smooth ends on your beads so that you don't cut your stringing material when you're making a finished jewelry design. Again, using more gravity. And sometimes this takes a little while, so be patient. Don't rush this process. It's a really fun, meditative exercise making hollow beads, as long as you don't rush it and don't get frustrated. And don't worry if your first ones don't work out. All it takes is practice. So I'm still using a little bit of gravity. And if you want to have your bead really round, you can use a variety of tools. And this is my favorite. This is the Holy Roller Marver by Barefoot Art. I like it because it's nice and lightweight. It's easy to use. 
I've had it for years, so I think they might still be in production. You can have to go online and check. But if not, there are plenty of other round marbling tools available for shaping round beads and marbles. You can take your pick. There's many, many, many to choose from. So I'm going to be taking my time here, just gently reheating the bead, keeping it warm in the flame, using gravity to make sure it's nice and even, and then checking it. I know this seems like a slow process, but hollow beads are very special. You want to make sure you take your time to get them just right. Sometimes it takes a few applications with your marvering tool. I will say one thing to remember when you're using a marver of any kind, don't have your bead too hot because it will then distort your bead as you're using the marver. And I'm not applying any pressure at all. It's hard to see in the video, but I'm just barely touching the bead to the marver, just using the weight of the bead itself, no pressure whatsoever. That's all it takes. And it takes a little bit of practice to get the heat just right. But that's all you need to do. Well, there you go. I hope you've enjoyed it. This has been one of my favorite beads to create. Thank you for watching.